What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I want to talk about Crimson Days, the latest week-long event to come to Destiny 2. Today I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion on it. Uh, no holding back, no asking in just the truth. But hey people, just to let you know, I have started streaming here on YouTube. Basically an everyday thing. And cover games such as D1, D2, Fortnite and also Monster Hunter, which I am a noob at. But you guys are helping me through that like bosses. If you'd like, you can sponsor me on my channel using that link within the top of the video description. It isn't necessary, but it does help me and my channel out. Now before I start talking about this event, Destiny 2 has become basically a meme. People will hate and bash on it at any given chance. And a lot of this bashing is coming from people who have given up on the game, obviously trying to make it their goal in putting others off too. Many people have told me they ain't played the game in months, which I can understand. When there's nothing to do, some people move on, but also some people stick around and try and smoke screen changes but you're trying to incorporate for the better with hate and so forth and unfortunately it seems as though this side of the community is growing stronger than its supporters this in my opinion is the biggest challenge Bungie have going forward. To change the minds of the many is going to take significant changes. Whether or not they are capable of doing so, we will see. Okay, so on to Crimson Days. Now Crimson Days in Destiny 1, I wasn't a fan of. Can't really say I was a massive fan of anything PvP wise in Destiny 1 though to tell the truth. Yeah, for sure I'd play certain things but I wasn't too keen on them. Crimson Days in the D1 era for me was no different. Because I wasn't a big fan of PvP, I wasn't really optimistic about the event back then. Yes, I played it for a certain amount of time, and yep, as most PvP related things, I hated it. PvP in Destiny 2 is a lot more balanced. Yes, you can say it, and to be honest, I would agree. Most of the fun has been taken out of it because it's been made to be, basically, really balanced. Hence why Mayhem was such a success in D2, it was super fun. It reminded us of those epic old D1 PvP Mayhem days. Nothing else PvP wise in my opinion relates to how it was back in the day. Crimson Days came to D2 yesterday and like Destiny 1 times, I wasn't very optimistic. I mean for sure, I'm actually a better PvP player now than I was ever in D1. But that's actually because like I said, things are more balanced. In my opinion there's a smaller skill gap to fill. D1 days, if you were good with hand cannons, nobody could touch you. In D2, if you're good with hand cannons, there are still various other weapons that can keep up. My personal choice are also rifles, a weapon type in D1 which was nerfed into the ground after the first few months and never saw the light of day again. I mean I actually remember enjoying PvP in Destiny 1 in the first few months, when they nerfed auto rifles it just ruined it for me. But in D2 auto rifles are in a great place. In my opinion I actually feel hand cannons might need a slight buff now as well as pulse rifles and scout rifles, obviously minus the minor multi tool. But yeah, auto rifles are great now, and using such weapons which allow me to actually have a chance leads me to actually enjoy PvP more so than I ever did in D1. So I streamed Crimson Days last night for 3 hours straight, and to be honest with you guys, I really enjoyed myself for the most part. The basic mechanics of the event are a 2v2 clash, which is round based on a best of 4. There is a time limit to the rounds and most kills win. If equal when the time runs out, a point will spawn within the map. First team to capture it wins. If no team catches it, the round is a tie. Within this mode, you and your partner, if in close proximity, gain a faster ability cooldown buff. And I mean, it's actually pretty quick. If you separate beyond a certain distance, the enemies will be located to your whereabouts. Now until you play it, you'd think it's going to be nothing more than basically team shooting like standard PvP, but in fact it isn't too bad at all. The difference is in standard PvP where it's 4v4, where you are a solo player and you run to a group of 3 or 4, it's hard to take any of them out, you're basically insta dead. In 2v2 it's much easier to take out two enemies, so team shooting really isn't that bad, and the fact it actually encourages you to run around it in a team, kind of a strange move but it actually works here. Now with the faster ability cooldowns paired with that lack of team shooting scene, it actually feels a lot more like D1 did than anything else. You can also play solo as it will match you with a partner also. Now the loot which can be seen on screen now comes from Crimson Engrams for the most part, the Nightfall and PvP. These Crimson Engrams you cannot purchase from Eververse, you can only earn them through gameplay, that's the Crimson Doubles playlist and via XP gains and levelling up. The loot works on a kind of smart loot system, it basically won't give you duplicates unless you already own all the loot these Engrams offer. 
The engrams also drop at a super quick rate too. I had basically 7 drop in 10 PvP matches and I also got 2 of the exotic sparrows from them 10 PvP matches. So this event is super rewarding if you play, you will get rewards. I still have plenty of loot to grind for, including the exotic emote which I will play on for later and also a few of the exotic ornament weapon skins. The new reskin Burning Shrine map in my opinion is absolutely beautiful. Definitely a plus, it's a map I've always liked from the get go of Destiny 1 so yeah, I'm glad it's returned. What makes me laugh here though is that people are complaining about this map coming back. This is a free event, the map, all the loot and so forth is free to earn and play which doesn't take an enormous grind. So what is there really to complain about? Ok so Destiny 2 isn't in a state of what it should be right now, such events for sure in the opinions of the many won't save the game. But what we have here with this Crimson Days event is definitely something I feel they have taken their time on with us at Fort. This is the only event I can remember which hasn't had its actual loot for sale via microtransactions. If you want loot, you play for that loot. This is a massive step in the right direction for the game and if this is the basis for future events to come, this is a good thing for sure. Now one of the only bad things here though is the loot itself, it's a little underwhelming. For sure the emo is decent but the sparrows and ghost shells are well, sparrows and ghost shells they don't really add anything to the game, to be honest neither does the emote. There are no new weapons and there are no new armour pieces, no new mods or anything else along those lines. All gear earnable via engrams are basically cosmetic items. And although that isn't really a bad thing, it kind of rubs off on the fact that this event is free and engrams cannot be bought. If shit is free, shit is gonna be, well, shit. Obviously the effect on such loot won't be stressed over by Bungie. So let's move on to the good points. The changes made to the loot and how it works within this event is a good addition. Additions I hope they improve upon in the future. The game mode is real fun. The ability cooldowns and the non-existent team shooting makes it feel so much better than normal PvP, that being 4v4. The amount of loot which drops is great. They definitely don't seem to be being stingy here with the loot drops. The return of the Burning Shrine is definitely a good thing too. I'm pretty sure it will, but I hope it does stay in rotation of maps once the event has gone. The bad things, well, the loot isn't the greatest. A few decent ornaments, an exotic emo and sparrow, and a shader which I will add does look epic, that being the Crimson Valor, I believe it's called. Another bad point for me though is the lack of PvE content here for this event. Yes, I know the event is supposed to be a PvP event, but a lot of the people out there play Destiny 2 for the PvE side of the game. I honestly think they should have allowed us to earn these engrams via strikes too, so strikes would have some worth. But other than that guys, I think in my personal opinion this event has been a success in terms of player experience and what we are used to. It's definitely on the right track and if Bungie work upon improving things for the future events, much like what we have seen here, I believe they might be able to make a turnaround for the game. Sandbox changes though are really important. They are as said working on many changes to the sandbox to make the game much more fun. Speeding up character subclasses, faster cooldowns, exotics being stronger and just in general what might be a better player experience overall. The sandbox changes are coming March 27th. This will fall in line with the Iron Banner 636. So if all changes are in place within the sandbox for this Iron Banner event, it should be quite interesting. Until then though, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. It's a long time between now and the 27th of March. But even so, this is the review of the current Crimson Days event. In my opinion, it's a great event with a great flow of rewards, not a lot behind a paywall and something which offers a glimpse into what the future PvP could feel like. On that note guys, I am out. Let me know what you think about this Crimson Days event. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really does help me out. Thanks for stopping by as always and hopefully people, I will see you on my next video or in my next stream chat. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand, but you and I will carry on, we never get it right.